Okay, so John Paul Sartre. Existence precedes essence. That was a famous phrase uttered by John Paul Sartre. And what he was getting at, it is, it is the cornerstone of existentialism, or one school of existentialism, let's say. And what he was getting at is that you were born, and then you yourself figure out what it is that you are going to become. You were born, and then you decide what is essential for you. That is, that is perfectly lines up with an atheistic worldview. Existence precedes essence. Now let's examine if that's true. And let's take the world that we actually inhabit. Existence precedes essence. Is that potentially true? Could that possibly be true? Now let me think of two examples from history, and I want you to keep in mind that these are two examples from American history that I'm just going off the top of my head. I did almost no research to think of these through. I just happened to think of two. And let's examine them in light of the idea that existence precedes essence. Now, normally when I talk to you about God versus no God, I keep my, my God side of it very general. I don't go into specific Christian theology because I don't find it helpful. I want to keep it general, God versus no God. But in this specific in this specific. In this specific discussion, I want, to, I want to bring you to the scriptures themselves and a Christian theological idea because it's, it's relevant. Christian theology, you hear constantly that God raised up a person for a time such as this, that God creates people with purpose in mind and God puts people into situations in history with purpose in mind. That's a common Christian theological teaching, but one of the most obvious examples is Abraham himself, father of the Jewish people. Jock God raised him up to do exactly what he did in his historical moment. Now let's look at actual history, because that would be the exact opposite of existence preceding essence. That would be essence divinely inspired by God, and then he creates you with the purpose in mind. That's a God idea. There is intelligence behind your design. You are created with a purpose in mind. Now let's examine history and see which, which side history seems to point to. And let's just take two examples. Abraham Lincoln and Martin Luther King Jr. Now keep in mind, these are not people I search far and wide for. These are two common examples from history. They are, you, you open up a history book of the United States history and you will come across them at some point or another particularly Abraham Lincoln, but also Martin Luther King Jr. These are two famous people from history. I didn't search far and wide for these examples. They just popped into my mind, off the top of my head. And I don't know American history all that well. I know European history pretty well. The wars, the World Wars I and II, I know very well. But American history, you know, I have a, a decent knowledge of American history. So this is just off the top of my head without digging too hard. That's where I'm going with that. Let's look at Martin Luther King Jr., Existence precedes essence. And look at, the, look, at, look, at the, look at his life in light of the history of the civil rights movement. See, the history of the civil rights, civil rights movement almost tore this country apart. Because, you know, black people had been oppressed for long enough and something needed to change. If there wasn't going to be a change and there wasn't healing going to be brought to this situation, it's possible that there would have been, you know, race riots, way more race riots, and, and real animosity between the races could have turned into something really, really bad for the nation. And lo and behold, at this pivotal moment in the, in the history of the United States, where this great injustice needs to be healed, lo and behold, a person shows up on the scene uniquely qualified to bring healing to that situation. Uniquely qualified. Profound gifts of oratory, one of the most famous speeches in the history of the United States, I Have a Dream. Go listen to it. It's suffused through with, with, with Bible talk and sounds like an Old Testament prophet, but that's neither here nor there. The point I'm going for is that 
Lo and behold, at the exact moment when he is needed in history, somebody shows up uniquely qualified to bring healing to that situation, both in temperament and in the talents that he possesses. Is that really plausible if there isn't a God? Keep in mind that I'm telling you something that actually happened in history. I'm not telling you a theory of history. I'm telling you the actual history of the United States. At the moment when, when it looked like racial, the, the, our history of racial injustice could actually tear the nation apart, somebody shows up, really happened, real human being, Martin Luther King Jr., with the exact gifts necessary to bring healing to that situation. And you honestly, do you honest to God think, if you look at that realistically and honestly, that that could happen if there were not a God? Really? Really think about it, because it really happened. Keep in mind that this person was uniquely qualified to his moment in history. How could that possibly occur if there were no God? It could not. The odds of somebody showing up at the right time with the right gifts for his historical moment would be mathematically like one in 10 billion. Now, let's go to Abraham Lincoln, because it happened again. If you don't believe in God, you would have to think that Martin Luther King, having just the right gifts for his moment in history, was some sort of coincidence. A coincidence. Is that honest to God plausible? Because I don't think it is. How could there be that big a coincidence? Now let's go to Abraham Lincoln. Abraham, huh? Where have I heard that name before? Oh, gee, what a coincidence. Just like, just like Abraham in the Bible. Hmm. Again, the history of racial injustice, same sin, a more intense version of the same sin, is going to tear the nation apart. And lo and behold, someone shows up on the scene uniquely qualified to the historical moment. Uniquely qualified to the historical moment who helps keep the nation together and bring healing who helped solve the biggest problem of American history up until that point. Is that honest to God believable that, 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 that God did not create Abraham Lincoln with that purpose in mind? How does he have the right gift for that moment? How is, again, oratory. How is he able to be a, a, a fantastic orator? It's just a coincidence? It's just a coincidence. Is that really honest to God plausible? Because I don't think that it is. I don't think you atheists are actually looking deep enough at the, at the truth. Because these, are only, these, aren't, these aren't really far and wide, out of the box examples. These are two examples from American history who pretty obviously were line up with the biblical idea that God raises up a person for a time such as this. Pretty obviously. Mathematically speaking, if we were talking about the scientific odds of two people showing up on the scene in history who exactly have the right gifts and the right temperament for that particular time, the mathematical odds of that happening would probably boggle the mind. It'd probably be two in ten billion, if even that. Look at the things that they said. Look at the speeches they gave. Uniquely qualified. If there's a God, that's a no-brainer. God raised up a person for a time such as this. God gave them the gifts they were going to need for, for that time in the future when they were called on to do the, the thing. God purposed them into the world. That's a no-brainer. How does that happen if there is no God? How, how could that possibly have happened if there isn't a God? This is a no-brainer, people. The things I'm going to tell you are obvious. You just have to look with your eyes open. That's a no-brainer. And I am not using some, you know, weird, random, hard-to-find person from history. I'm using two people that if you open the United history book of the United States, will, will be, you know, two, person number one and two out of ten. You know? Maybe number five and seven out of ten. But these are, these, are, these are people, if you take a history course, they're going to come up. 
their name is going to come up. And it looks suspiciously like they were created exactly for their moment in history, given the unique gifts to bring healing to their moment in history. How could that not be? How could there not be a God and that, that, that coincidence occur? Is that really plausible to you? Because it's not really plausible. It's an accident? It's easy to think that life itself may be some sort of cosmic accident, but when you start looking at the specifics of the history of the world we inhabit, it is not even close to rational or plausible that that could be an accident. That Abraham Lincoln just sort of, you know, at the time when, when history required somebody to be exactly like Abraham Lincoln and be an orator and be, you know, a, a great president and have the skills necessary to bring healing, he just sort of was there and, gee, what a coincidence. That's not even close to plausible. That's why the Bible says the kings of God are clearly visible. It doesn't say it's hidden. It says it's clearly visible. That's pretty clearly visible. That can't possibly be an accident, people. It can't possibly be an accident. Be honest. That, that there's no way to account for that in a world without a God. There is no way to account for that type of coincidence in a world without a God. And these are only the two off the top of my head. I could, I could think of 150 of these without even opening a book, without even going online. Winston Churchill. Gandhi, I can think of 150 people who look like they were uniquely designed for the moment that they lived in. There is no way on earth that that could be true in a, in a world without a God. No way on earth. In a world with an intelligent designer created with his purposes in mind, that's a no-brainer. Of course, you would see evidence of that everywhere, which you in fact do. I didn't look very hard for these two examples. They're just two off the top of my head. There is no way to account for them in a world without God. None. No way to account for that. It's mathematical impossibility that, that anybody would be uniquely qualified to any position in history would be a mathematical impossibility. And yet, here are two examples of exactly that. And gee, what a coincidence both of them were, were believers in God. Huh. Gee, I wonder if that's part of it. And both of them referenced God when they spoke. Hmm. Gee, what a coincidence. I can go on with these, and I will. But I shouldn't have to put together 1,000 of these before you wake up and realize that this is a no-brainer. That God is real. And that evidence of God is readily available to you. I can put together 1,000 of these. But I should not have to. This one right here should be enough. Just go, go look for yourself. Go, go look at the history of Abraham Lincoln and tell me, for, tell me, honest to God, it doesn't look suspiciously like he was created with that end in mind. Because that's what, exactly what it looks like. And do the same thing for Martin Luther King. And tell me it doesn't look suspiciously like he was created for exactly what he did, exactly his purpose in the world. It's God, people. He's real. God is real. God is real, and God is fairly obvious. You just need to look honestly and turn on the lights. Because I should not have to do a thousand of these. Those two are enough. That's really, honest to God, enough evidence right there. There is no way on earth that that could, that could have happened spontaneously, by coincidence, by chance. None. No way on earth. That that's, staggers the imagination. That can't, that you, that's not even close to rational. Atheists love to say all the time, you know, reason. That's not even close to reasonable that that could have happened by accident. None. No way. No. So I'll do a thousand more of these, but honestly, I don't have to. Game over. God is real. God is real, and his fingerprints are all over the world we inhabit. All over the world we inhabit. God is real, and evidence of him is everywhere if you open your eyes. Game over.